Greetings everyone, my name is Jimmy Linville. I'm the owner of 4L Irrigation. I wanna to talk to you today about controllers and not the programming aspect. Uh, today's uh, controllers have a lot of features and so we don't wanna get into all of those. Uh, however, controllers do some fundamental things and they take electricity and they convert it to at least 24 volts, approximately 24 volts, and then they make sure that it is only going to the zone that you want it to go to, uh, that the controller is telling it to. And basically, if your controller is doing that, aside from all the programming things, then it's doing its job. Um, there are multiple types of controllers. Some are very old. I get a lot of questions about how old a controller can be and still work. And the answer is, is as long as it's doing those fundamental things, then you're okay. Uh, on any controller, the first thing you want to do is check and make sure your source is good. So most outlets have about 120 volts coming out of them, and you can check on multiple ways. You can use a multimeter on them. Uh, you can plug in an appliance like a light or something that you know works and make sure that it comes on. You can buy a simple little tool like this, and this is what we're going to use today. This tool tells me if I get these two lights to come on and no others, then everything is working appropriately. So I'm going to plug that in, and so now I know our source is good. So when I check all of these controllers, uh, we know at least that our source is good. Uh, the other thing you want to make sure that you have is you want to make sure that you have um, a multimeter. This particular multimeter is simple to read, and that's what I suggest above brands and everything else. Make sure that it's simple to read. For today, the only thing we're concerned about is the voltage, and it has that wavy line on top, and that tells us that's alternating current, and that's what we're dealing with with the plug-in uh, that, that we have, and that's what's gonna service every one of the controllers. So, with that in mind, let me give you one tip before we get started. If you ever have doubts, whether it be on the programming side or uh, on the, the fundamental side that we're talking about today, all major manufacturers have a call-in line that will help residents walk through the issues on their controller. Again, whether it be programming or the fundamental things. Now, if it's the fundamental things, you're going to have to make sure that you have a multimeter so that as they walk you through these things, you can give them the readings and they can tell you what they mean. Now with that in mind, uh, we're gonna start with this controller. This is a controller that is decades old. I actually took it out last uh, summer, the summer of 2019, and I took it out, everything was working fine. They just wanted to upgrade their controller, which is certainly understandable. Uh, so again, we're gonna look at those fundamental things that we had talked about earlier. I'm gonna turn everything on off on this and make sure that it is off. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my probe and I'm going to put one of the probes, uh, I can see where the electricity is coming in at, and so I'm going to put one probe on each of these connections, and I'm going to turn around, and I can see I have 125 volts. Now, that is a lot of electricity. You usually won't see that um, out front in these type of controllers. You'll usually see the converted electricity, so uh, about 24 volts. So when you're dealing with old controllers like this, just be careful. Don't you know, stick a screwdriver in there, not looking at what you're doing. Don't touch it. Uh, make sure you just use the probes. If you do have to get in there, unplug it so that you can be safe. So remember, we know that our source is good. We know that our controller has electricity. It has 125 volts. The other thing we said it has to do is it has to convert that down to approximately 24 volts. And it also has to just give it to the stations that we're talking about. So in order to test that, I'm gonna turn this over to manual and I'm gonna turn this over to one, and that's all we have to do. My, my multimeter is already set, so I'm gonna put one probe on the common, and on this particular controller, the, the probe is right here, and I'm gonna put it on zone one, and when I turn around, you can see that we have 30 volts. If I put it on zone two, you can see I've got a couple of volts, but that's okay. So this controller is doing exactly what we want it to do. We told it to give uh, voltage to zone one, and it did. Now, there could be other things wrong in the field, but for this controller, it's doing everything that we ask it to do on those fundamental principles. We're gonna check those same exact things on the rest of these controllers. So this is a, a, an orbit controller. The, the transformer that takes it from 120 volts to uh, 24 volts is inside, and it's sealed. So I don't have a place where I can put my probes to see if it has uh, juice coming into it. But what I do know is the battery is missing and I have a display. 
So that tells me that I am getting juice. And so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn on zone one. We're gonna enter that manually and we're gonna go over to zone one. We're gonna put a couple minutes on it and I'm gonna wait until the controller tells me that it's actually running and, and zone one is on. And it just says one is on for four minutes. So now you can see below here, I don't have any wires that are truly connected, but I can't get my probes up in here. So I'm just trying to use these wires that I can put my probes on to see if we have juice flowing through there. So I'm gonna put one of these probes on the common and I'm gonna put one of them on, this says pump, it's actually the master valve. And remember on a controller, if there's a place for a master valve, uh, it has to give, if you say turn on zone one, it also gives juice to the master valve because the master valve has to come on every single time or nothing's gonna work. So I put one probe there, I put one probe on the master valve and I look at my controller and I do not have voltage. So one thing to keep in mind on this particular controller, I'm looking at the sensor port. Uh, in, in the old sensors uh, used to not be wireless. And so there would be a component that is inside and it would be wired into these two ports. And there would be a component that's outside. And many times that outside wire got cut. And when that happens, everything stops working. A lot of people will remove those wires to see if it's their controller or if it's something with the sensor. When you remove the wires, there has to be a jumper in there. In most all controllers, there has to be a jumper on there. And I'll kind of show you the jumpers we go through. But the thing I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna turn this off, and I just made a little jumper here that just completes this circuit. And I'm gonna push it up into the sensor place. And this is just push right up and so now that's in there and that is done now I'm gonna do the same exact thing that I did a while ago I'm gonna come over here move that over just a little bit so that it doesn't touch I'm gonna come over I'm gonna turn this to auto I'm gonna turn on zone one get a couple of minutes on it I'm gonna wait till the controller tells me that zone one is running right now it says one is running for four minutes then I'm gonna come over here with my probe and I'm gonna do the same thing I did a while ago I'm gonna put one on the common and I'm gonna put one on the master valve and I can see I have 30 volts, so that is working. Now I'm gonna to go to zone one and I have 30 volts there, that is working. I go to four and it's just nothing. I go to three, nothing. And I go to two, nothing. So this controller we just repaired, everything is working on it now. It is now doing its job. Um, this controller is going to be a little bit of a different scenario, but I'm going to start here, whereas before I could, didn't have a place to put my probes on this one, I can check it. I know my source is good. Remember, we checked that earlier. And now when I look at my multimeter, we have 27 volts. So I know that my controller has already transformed that 120 volts into 24 volts, and that is appropriate. Now I'm going to turn on zone one. Okay, zone one is on. It's hard to see, but there is a metal jumper right here that completes this circuit. So it looks a little different than the one that I did a while ago, but it's still doing the same thing. It's completing that circuit. So I know I don't have to worry about that. Then I'm gonna put one probe on the common. I'm gonna put one probe on this master valve. And when I look over here, I have no voltage. Huh, so I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna take it off the master valve and I'm gonna put it on zone one. Zone one has 27 volts. That is correct, right? But remember, we said if the master valve doesn't work, nothing works. So the complaint here is nothing works. And even though the controller is giving voltage to, to zone one, it's not giving it to the master valve, which means the only thing we can do is replace this uh, valve, uh, or, or rather this controller. So there's no repair that we can make on that. We just have to replace it. This one's a little bit different. Uh, on this one, the, the problem that the client com complained about is sometimes this one works and sometimes this one doesn't. I'm gonna move my multimeter down just a little bit even though we're not gonna use it on this one. Uh, but I, I want you to see that right now, this says I'm on manual station. So when the client would move it over to manual and try to run it, he couldn't get it to do anything. And the reason is, is because this selector, and you see these same types of selectors on, on all of these that we have present today. They're not on all controllers, but on all the ones that we have out here. Many times these will start going out. And so the contacts on the back of this selector is not working. 
and it thinks that it's off when actually we're trying to run it in manual. Now, if I go back up here to off, still thinks it's off, but I go, this is run, that is correct. So it just, it doesn't quite know where it's at. And so as we move it through the different motions, sometimes it knows, like right now, I think it's off. This one's actually still running. He said, sometimes it would just come on by itself. So this is the reason for that. Uh, so again, nothing we can do in this scenario. We just have to replace the entire controller. Another one, this is a Rainbird controller and we are gonna look at it. So here, this is where I have the voltage coming in. So I'm gonna put one probe here and I'm gonna put one probe here and I'm gonna look over and I have 30 volts. So again, I know my source is good on this one. I know that the controller is taking it and it is converting it to what it needs to be. And I'm just gonna go over here to zone one and put a couple of minutes on it. And so we can see now zone one is on for two minutes and I'm gonna do the same thing that I did a while ago. I want to take a common and then I'm going to put it on zone one, look over at my controller and I have 30 volts. Well, now that's all fine and dandy. Uh, I put it on my master valve. I've also got 30 volts there, but watch what happens. I put it on zone two. Now I have 12 volts. Put it on zone three. I've got five. And if I put it on zone four, I've got 30 volts again. So the problem with this controller and the complaint the client had is when I turn on my controller, I've got a couple different areas where it just bubbles out water, but nothing works. Well, the problem is, and the reason we have different zones in our yard is because usually we don't have enough pressure to wire, uh, water our entire yard at once. If we did, we would just have one station, turn it on and take care of it all at once. But in this scenario, what the controller is doing, it is giving it properly to zone one, but it's also giving the same amount of voltage, 30 volts to zone four. So both of those come on and really it looks like nothing is happening, everything is just leaking. And the problem is the controller. Again, in this scenario, there's nothing we can do. We have to replace the controller. The very last one we're gonna look at, the complaint on this one is, okay, uh, zone one works okay when I turn it on. So, uh, and again, we can see zone one is working. Zone two is working. Zone three is working. Zone four is working. But the client says once zone four works, it just either stops for a while or it jumps ahead to zone eight. So when I turn it to five, whoops, when I turn it to five, six, seven, it gets those errors and it jumps immediately to seven. Now, sometimes it would go to five and it would stay there or six and would stay there, but it didn't, uh, nothing worked. And so the reason for that, this one has separate modules inside of it. So uh, again, if we look at these modules, the first one has the master valve all the way to zone four. That's one module. This one has five, six, and seven, one module. This one has eight through 13, one module. When there is a complaint about a series of valves not working. A lot of times a, a common has been cut in the field, uh, but again, we're not talking about that today. We're talking about in regards to controllers, a lot of times this whole module will go out. So what we can do is we can turn this off and we won't have to replace this whole thing. We'll simply take out this module. We'll get a brand new module and put it in here. Instead of paying, you know, 150 bucks, we can pay 40 bucks uh, for a new module. We'll turn it on. Now, uh, we'll turn it back to run and we're gonna try the same thing again. Now, before I turn it on, again, if I'd have done this earlier, you'd have seen the same thing, but we've got our voltage here, right? 29 volts. And then if I turn on zone one, right? I put one on the common and one on zone one. And again, Oops. We got 29 volts, so that's working. But remember before, when we got up to zones five, six, and seven, it, we had an error. So zone five, you can see it's working now. <clears throat> six, it's working now. Seven, it's working now. <clears throat> and if I take and I measure on zone seven, Excuse me, you can see we have 29 volts. So I hope this information helps you. I love to help DIY people. 